Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to teach you all about air conditioners in Arc, and we'll show you everything you need to know to effectively use air conditioning, both to keep your character cool and for incubating eggs, which is probably why you're so interested in an air conditioner in the first place. So we'll teach you all about the different effects of the air conditioner and how to use an air conditioner most effectively in Arc. We're also going to teach you how to make an air conditioner and all of the different components that you'll need and how to actually fabricate it in the fabricator. We're also going to show you how to hook it up to an electrical grid, especially one that you've already got going, and how to actually power it on and make sure that it's keeping you and your eggs as cool as possible. So be sure to watch the rest of this episode. It will be full of great tips and tricks for air conditioning in ARC. So here we are back at our plateau base. We spent a lot of time on expeditions down in the swamp in the redwoods, and it's really nice to be home. So we have this empty room here to the left of the porch, and I've been trying to figure out what to do with this area. It's a really great spot, and I've now decided I'm going to make that the egg hatchery. So that will be a nursery for breeding and hatching eggs, and one of the best things we can get for that hatchery is an air conditioner because that makes it much easier to hatch eggs and you can hatch lots of eggs at the same time using an air conditioner. So we just got back from an expedition where we got tons of obsidian. We flew halfway across the map to the volcano crater with an Argent Avis and Tapehara and filled it up with tons of obsidian, which is what we're going to use to make the polymer that we need. Now I actually designed this base with an Argent Avis in mind because I wanted to make it really easy to land an Argent right here on the porch and have the forges and smithy and everything that I need right here next to it. So I can stand here, open up the door, unload tons of metal and obsidian, more than I can carry, and then I can just drop it straight into the forges without actually having to move a step, which is good because I've got so much metal I cannot move. So I'm gonna load up this other forge here and we'll get both of these forges smelting at the same time. And I'm also really close to the fabricator. So if I open this side door, I can actually toss stuff straight over there. Also, I showed you a couple episodes ago how I tamed a snail, and he has been constantly producing Akatina paste, which is a substitute for cementing paste. So that's going to be really helpful because we're actually going to make the polymer that we need to make this air conditioner using the obsidian we picked up and then this snail poop, which is falling on the ground constantly. So that'll be really easy. We've got plenty of cementing paste to work with now. You can see we have over over a hundred, and that all came from the snail who has just been constantly producing Akatina paste. So we now have the metal smelting, and that'll give us a lot of metal to work with. But we've already got quite a bit in the fabricator here, and we picked up a lot of electronics from killing off a bunch of robot dinosaurs. The tech dinos now drop electronics when you kill them, but we've also got some pearls. So in order to make a fabricator, we need 15 electronics. So I'm going to go ahead and craft some more using metal ingots and silica pearls. And I had to turn on the fabricator in order to start this working. A lot of people uh, have trouble with that. But I'm going to go ahead and learn the engram for actually making the air conditioning unit, which is in the 60s somewhere. Let me keep scrolling until I find it. I have so many engrams to unlock. It takes a little while to actually find the engrams I'm looking for. But I think it's around level 61, if I remember correctly. And that's going to actually unlock the ability to make an air conditioner. Oh, nailed it. All right. So now we have the air conditioner engram unlocked, and it takes crystal electronics and uh, polymer. So we're going to actually have to make the rest of the polymer that we need. Now in order to run a fabricator, you've got to put gasoline in the fabricator, and I have an entire episode on how to use a fabricator and how to get the oil and make the gasoline for it. So I'll drop links in the description for that, and be sure to check those out if you have not seen them. So I went ahead and made the polymer, which was using 
the cementing paste and I'm substituting snail acatina paste and I already had the electronics ready so we just went ahead and created that air conditioner and I'm also going to make some electrical cables because I want to extend my electric system and place an outlet right next to the air conditioner so that we can actually use that so I'll have to make a few more electronics to make the electric outlet and let me go ahead and grab some of this in my inventory. Now I need a little bit of wood for that electric outlet and I'm trying to remember where I have put that. Oop, more Akatina paste, that's great. This is one of the beautiful things about having a snail in your base is it just constantly produces cementing paste and it's really easy to get. So it looks like I've used up a lot of my supplies when I was building some of this stuff. So let's see, does our brontosaur have some wood on him? Up, oh, good. He's always got some good materials. This is Bob the Brontosaurus. We actually did a Bob Ross style painting on the back of the Brontosaurus. It's kind of hard to see with this lighting, but uh, if you missed that, check it out. I've got a link in the description of this video. It's a pretty fun video. So let me drop the wood in here, and now I should have all the stuff that I need to actually make the electronics. It's kind of confusing because the folders are electric and electrical, and the electrical system is uh, all of the electric components that you need to make the wires and cables and all that good stuff. So I'm going to head upstairs and you can see I've got my electric generator right here and there's the snail back there that's been producing all of the cementing paste. So I'll go ahead and drag the cable into my inventory and somewhere right in front of this generator I have a connector which is one of those plus adapters so that'll allow it to go in different directions and I think it's right about here you can't actually see this but I'm gonna try to snap it right here and see if it'll attach correctly so I should be able to get that cable going there we go okay hopefully that's in the right spot now one tip, if you are adding electrical wiring and you cannot see where it is, you can actually use an electric box to estimate where things are. But you can see right here that this junction is a much easier to see where it's snapping to. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to snap that right here and that's going to allow me to continue making my electric system go this direction. So I will try to snap this in the next spot. Once again, I'm kind of doing this blind, so I'm hoping this works out. But I can kind of see just a tiny bit of a green glow through the floor, and it looks like it's working just fine. Although, let me measure this here, and I'll drop the electric box. It always snaps to the end of the cable, so now I can actually see where that cable's located. And I want to get that closer to the hatch frame, so I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more electric cables here. And let's go back to electronics and electrical. And there we go. It should be just maybe one or two of these things should do the trick. So let's head back on up here and I will snap this to the next spot. Once again using the electric box to tell where everything is connected. And now we can actually see the wire and it's yellow which means it's getting electricity. And I think I want to bring that just a little bit closer just to make sure that I can reach all of the stuff that I want to reach. So let's just go ahead and make maybe one more. That should be enough there. And that way we can make sure that the electric outlet is sticking right in the middle of the nursery and that way we can put lots of air conditioners here and the cables will reach. So now I've got this electric cable and I just want to make sure it's not blocking the ladder because this is my main access to the roof and it looks like everything is fine so it can go right through there without causing any trouble if I can just let go of that ladder. There we go. So now we've got an electric box right up here and that should be able to power anything in this little wing. So I'll go ahead and bring down the air conditioner unit here and we're going to just place this right on the side. Now each air conditioner unit increases your hypothermal and hyperthermal insulation by 100 each. And if you add more air conditioning units, it increases the effect. So two units gives you 200 hyper and hypothermal insulation. Now, if it's got green lights on the bottom and that little cord right there, that means it's powered and it's working. And if you look at my stats, 
Back here, I've got 202 hypothermal and 50 hyperthermal insulation. But if I get close to it, I have 306 and 160. So you can see that it's increasing by about 100 when I'm right next to it. But each time I take a step back, it decreases the effect of the air conditioner. And once I'm about two foundations away from the air conditioner, it has no effect on me whatsoever. So the closer you are to the AC unit, the better it cools you and warms you up. Now, if I was worried about keeping myself warm or cool in my base, I would actually put the AC unit right in the center of the base and about the distance I'm standing right here is about where the effect drops off. So if I put air conditioning units about every two foundations, it will keep the entire base cool and warm at the same time, which is pretty nice when you're living in a jungle like this. It gets pretty hot down here, and it's a lot easier if I can actually step inside the base and cool off. But the main reason that I want this air conditioning unit is so that I can actually use it to hatch eggs and it's going to be really helpful when I'm hatching eggs. Now I'm probably going to put three or four air conditioning units next to each other when I'm doing the egg hatching and the reason that I'm using an AC unit instead of just standing torches which also keep an egg warm or cool is because they do it at the same time. So if you look at my uh, stats right here I've got 202 and 47 but when I turn on a fire, it actually decreases my hyperthermal and increases my hypothermal. So it makes it hotter and reduces the cold. But with an air conditioning unit, it makes it both hot and cold at the same time. So if you've got an egg next to a bunch of AC units, you can hatch an egg that needs a hot temperature and an egg that needs a cold temperature at the same time. And with a few units, you can hatch just about any egg and you can put a pile of eggs from different dinosaurs right between those units and you can just hatch them without even having to adjust the temperature. Whereas if you're trying to hatch a different egg at the same time, like say a Pteranodon egg and an Ankylosaur egg, one needs to be pretty hot, one needs to be pretty cool, and you cannot easily hatch both of them at the same time in a nursery area because it makes it too hot or too cold for one of them. They're not both happy. But the air conditioning units just solve that problem altogether. And another thing is, I'm going to be hatching some ankylosaur eggs really soon. And ankylosaurs, if I remember correctly, need a very cold temperature to hatch their egg. And the only way to get it cool enough is at nighttime in the jungle, because it's just naturally hot here. So this will be really helpful. And in the next episode, we're actually going to finish the nursery and show you how to hatch a bunch of eggs using this technique. So thanks so much for watching. Watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please drop a like and please subscribe to this channel. It really helps us out a lot. And be sure to ring that bell for notifications when you do, and it will let you know when the next guide comes out. And if you really want to thank me for producing these guides, please check the link in the description of this video for a link to my new channel with my wife, where the two of us play co-op games together on Nintendo Switch. And we would love it if you jump over there and subscribe to that channel too. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.